I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to recreate a flower petal as an example of a real object with some pretty complex colour shading. By using a layered approach in combination with the Zara X fill types and transparency types, I can do this in just a few minutes. I'm going to zoom in here to this particular flower and I'm going to recreate just this petal here. If I move this out of the way, you can see one I created earlier. And you can see that the petal has got a whole range of seemingly complex fill and texture types. And yet, it only takes me a few minutes to recreate. So, first of all, I'm actually going to select this object. Delete it. Move back to the flower in question. The first thing to do is just crop this part out of the picture by drawing a rectangle over it first of all. And then selecting it and the picture below using shift click and selecting Intersect Shapes. Let's move this to the side and enlarge it a bit. First of all, I'm going to create my outline shape using the freehand tool. And I can do that pretty easily by drawing around the outline of this petal. I don't have to be too accurate. And as I get to the end, you'll see a little plus sign indicating that when I let go, I get my filled shape. Let's move this out of the way. Now obviously this is a black shape at the moment and by using the colour editor I can go and pick using the eyedropper feature any colour off the screen. And as you can see as I drag this over various parts of the picture it's picking up the colour under the eyedropper. So I'm just going to pick a sort of mid purple colour like that. You can also see that this shape has got an outline around the outside. I don't want that, so I'm going to right click here, which gets rid of the outline. Now first of all, you can see that this particular petal here has got a range of shading that goes across the petal. And my first step to simulate that is to create a graduated fill across my shape. So I simply select the fill tool and then click and drag across. When I let go, you can see the fill arrow showing the direction of the fill. In this case, it's defaulted to white, but I want to change that, so I just click on the start here, and again, by using the eyedropper tool, I can go and select the start colour here. So I'm just going to pick a colour from around this side, a sort of nice, bright, deep colour. Further into the flower, you can see that it becomes a paler colour, and to recreate that, I need a multi-stage graduated fill. I can do that by simply double clicking anywhere on the fill line. That creates a new fill handle. And I can now go and adjust that again by using the eyedropper, dragging it over the appropriate part of the flower so I can get this sort of highlighted purple colour. And I can repeat this process. So you can see here, it gets darker again. So I just double click on the line here and go and pick a darker colour. And again, you can see it getting lighter there. So I can select the end and go and pick one of the lighter colours here. Perhaps I can make that a bit paler as well by adjusting the colour in the editor, as we can see. And by adjusting the direction and the angle of the fill tool interactively like this, it's really very easy for me to get the exact colour and fill patterns that I want. OK, that's the first stage complete. If you look at the flower, you can see along the left hand edge that it's a more orangey colour. So I want to overlay this sort of shading here. The easy way to do that is to start with my shape, select clone shape, which just creates an identical copy on top. And now I'm going to create a flat fill this time. So I select the fill tool again, select flat. And I'm now going to use the eyedropper again to pick the appropriate one that I want. And I'm going to adjust the color here to make it just a little more vivid. But of course, I only want to highlight that section, and that is where the transparency tool comes in. By selecting the transparency tool and an elliptical transparency, you can see that I've now got an overlaid colour. And by adjusting the position, direction and angle of these fill handles, I can adjust the shading quite easily. So in fact, this fill is going along that edge, pretty much as it is on the original flower. 
I can carry on using this particular effect to overlay more shades. The next obvious difference is that you can see under the flower that it has become quite dark. And that's pretty easy to simulate using the same technique. So with the shape selected, again, I go and clone it. Again, I select a flat fill. And I'm just going to select a sort of mid-darkish colour. And this time, I'm going to create a linear transparency. And by just clicking and dragging up from the bottom, you can see the effect beginning to happen. But I'm going to use one of Zara X's alternative transparency types. In this particular case, stained glass. And straight away, you can see that it actually makes it much darker. Stained glass is really good for darkening shades. And as I drag this arrow around, you can see the different effects here. And so, straight away, I'm getting a more realistic, complex fill on my flower petal. And that's just done with three shapes. But there's one other factor you might notice. The drawing that I've created is very smooth. Too smooth. It looks like many computer-generated illustrations. Whereas the actual real flower on the left has a granular texture to it. Now we can simulate that using the fractal fill types. So now I'm going to take this object, again create a clone copy on top, and I'm going to select the transparency, in this case to no transparency. And I'm going to select the fill type and create a fractal fill. I've got two options here, fractal clouds and fractal plasma. The plasma one is more what I'm looking for. And I can adjust this fill interactively, like all of them. And you can see that as I drag the fill handles around, I can adjust the grain texture. Actually, if I unselect the fill handles, then I get more numeric control here. And so you can see that this has a fractal fill or a fractal grain of 30. I want it to be more grainy than that. So I'm going to select something like 80. And straight away you can see a much finer grain. But of course, it's far too opaque. Therefore, by simply using the transparency tool again and adjusting the transparency slider here, I can fade the background in and mix the two. If I set it to be 100% transparent, then you have your original smooth image. So I actually want quite a subtle grainy texture here something like 90% transparent, 10% opaque. So there we have it. I have created a flower petal that is pretty realistic. If I now just go and select this whole thing and enlarge it a bit, you can see the texture effect and the various shadings. Let me just move this out of the way. I'm going to dismantle this to show you. That's the top layer, which is the fractal texture. The layer underneath uses the stained transparency to show the darkening along the bottom. And then there's the orangey highlight on the left-hand side. And finally, the original image with multi-stage linear fill. Let's undo that and put it all back together again. And finally, this object has got quite a sharp edge. If we want to soften it, we can just select the whole thing group it, and then use the feather slider here to adjust the edges of the object so it's not quite so hard. So a few pixels soft edge makes it look that much more realistic. There we are, a very realistic flower petal with a complex fill and texture, created in just a few minutes. This demonstrates the power and the speed of the Zara fill and transparency tools.